So now we can take a look now that we've now that we've found out how to use the scalar product or dot product. Remember, it's these two equations here. We can actually do another example. We can calculate the angle between these two 3D vectors. And I'm not going to bother trying to draw these. I'm just going to work with them directly. So all I have to do is remember this thing right here. If I want the angle between them, it's V dot W over V W like this. And then I can use this. So let's go back here and actually use that. So because of that, I know that the cosine of the angle between them is going to be equal to uh, what we just saw here. It's S dot T divided by the length of vector S times the length of vector T. That's how I use this, right? I just do it like this, VW over VW like this. So that's this one. And remember that if I ever want to figure out the dot product piece, the actual dot product, it's V1, W1, and so on and so on. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to use this. So that's going to be, how do I actually do this? I take each of the pieces here. So it's going to be, uh, in this case, 1 times negative 1. Remember, this is what I'm doing now. I'm walking along the top here. This is the only part that seems weird, right? It's that I'm, I'm figuring out what S dot T is, and I'm using this first equation here to get me that. S dot T is going to be S1 T1 plus S2 T2 and so on. So because of that, this is S1, this is S2, this is S3, and this is T1, T2, T3. So I'm just going to do the first one times the first one plus, let's see, i got to do the second one times the second one. So 2 times 0 plus 3 times 2. And all that's divided by square root of, that's how we do the magnitudes, remember? Magnitudes are done by square root of the sum of the squares. So because of that, I can say, all right, a square root of, let's see, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared times a square root of negative 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 2 squared. So although this looks like a mess, you just slowly, slowly take your time through it, you can get there. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 2 times 0 is 0. 3 times 2 is 6. All that divided by the square root of, let's see, 1 squared, that's 1. 2 squared is 4. And 3 squared is 9. All that times the square root of, let's see, negative 1 squared, that's 1. 0 squared is 0. And 2 squared is 4. All right, it's looking better already. You see, once you get used to doing this, it may be lengthy and a little bit ugly, but it's totally doable. Negative 1 plus 0 plus 6, well, that's just 6 minus 1, so that's 5. And then we have 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 plus 1 is 14, so I have a square root of 14. That's still ugly. Um, and 1 plus 4, that's square root of 5. So there we go. I've got this mess. Now all i got to do is do that on my calculator. Well, that's because I know that theta is going to be inverse cos of that answer. What I just did there, that's that piece right there. So that means theta equals, and let's just use our calculator for it. So let's see here. I need to do square root of 14. I'm going to do the bottom first. So square root of 14 times square root of 5. So I'm giving you ones that look really ugly, but that's okay. You can totally deal with them. Sometimes they work out really nicely, and you can do it without a calculator, but this time we can't. Well, the exact form, I suppose, would be inverse cos of this. That's the exact answer. But to actually get an angle, let's see. So we do square root of 14 times square root of 5. And I do 5 divided by that. It may seem like I'm doing it backwards, but that's just the way I like to do it. You do it however you want. You do it however you want. And then I take the inverse cos of that. There we go. And I get 53.3 degrees. So let's say that's pretty much 53 degrees. Ta-da! There we go. Yeah! So you can totally do these. Right? You can do these by just slowly working your way through the equation and away you go. Uh, now I think it helps to bring in perpendicular lines because they're going to they're gonna be related to what we need here. Remember though what perpendicular lines mean. Perpendicular lines means two lines that are like this. Whoops. It shouldn't look curved at all. It should be a straight line. Perpendicular lines are like this. In other words, these are two lines where the angle between them, this is really important here, angle between them is 90 degrees. That's what we mean by perpendicular. Okay, 90 degrees. That's the angle between these lines. That's what we mean. 
Now we can see this. We can see that um, yeah, that's the angle between them, sure. Um, and in fact, if it's in 3D, it's going to be orthogonal. In other words, it's going to be in uh, three dimensions, but it's still going to be 90 degrees. It's still going to work. So if you use this equation, remember this equation uh, up here for v dot w equals, you know, v w cos theta. Let's just use that one again. So v dot w equals length of v times length of w cos theta. I'm going to rewrite that right here. So if you used v dot w equals length of v times length of w times cos theta. Don't forget the vector sign. Sound effects for vectors, yes. There we go, so there it is. If I do this, well if the angle between them is 90 degrees, that means theta equals 90 degrees. Okay, what's the cosine of 90 degrees? You can use your calculator, of course, or you can remember how cosine graphs work. You know, if you start off like this, cosine starts off like this right here. If this is, this is 360 degrees, or if you do it in radians, those are two pi radians. But if we do it at uh, 90 degrees, uh, this right here, by the way, is one, and this goes down to negative one. If this, we do this in degrees. If this is 360, that means this right here, that's 180. That means 90 is right here. Hold on, 90 degrees, the y value is zero. So that means the cosine of 90 is zero. This is the important thing. This is kind of the most sort of, this is it, you need this. If you don't believe me, by the way, that cos of 90 is zero, remember cos 90, there you go. Boom, it's zero. All right. So because of that, we know that cosine of 90 is zero. What does that do for us? Well, that means that if these two lines are perpendicular, and if the cosine of 90 is zero, and the angle between them is 90, I hope you can see where this leads. That means leads that this thing right here, that's zero. And if this thing is zero, zero times anything else, still zero. So that means, dun, 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 we have v dot w equals zero. This is really important. So this is what it means, okay? So if you have perpendicular lines, we know that the angle between them is zero. Here are the important parts. Perpendicular means angle between them is zero, uh, sorry, 90 degrees. And because the angle between them is 90 degrees, cosine of 90 is zero. Chuck them into that equation and you get then that v dot w equals zero. Now, why in the world do we care about this? Well, we might want to find out what conditions make these things perpendicular. Or if we're told that they're perpendicular, maybe we can use those to solve other things. So here is one such example, because they love doing this in textbooks and tests and exams, right? Find t such that a equals negative 1, 5. This is a 5, not an s. And b equals 2t. And we're told that they're perpendicular. Keep in mind, my writing sucks. I can see that my t's look a lot like, uh, well, this is a, supposed to be a t and this is a t. So we're told that they are perpendicular. So let's use that fact. The fact that they're perpendicular tells us that the angle between them is 90 and cos of 90 is zero. So that means this piece is zero. That means v dot w is zero. This is what we can state already, v dot w is zero. So in this case then, instead of v dot w, I can say that because they're perpendicular, this is the logical step here, that means that a dot b equals zero. Right? That's what it means, right? Because theta equals 90 and cos of 90 equals zero, dot, 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 dot. We got there. There's what we just did. So a dot b equals zero. Now, what does that tell you? Remember from the beginning, we were learning what a dot product means. It means uh, a dot b is going to be a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 and so on. So that means this is really cool. So because of this, that means then I can actually work out the dot product here. The dot product is this thing times this thing. So that means that negative 1 times 2 plus 5 times t. This is what this dot product means, right? I'm just doing the a1, b1, a2, b2, just like I'm told. See, I'm following the recipe here. And because of that, whoops, there we go. So because of that, then take a look. This thing equals zero. And negative one times two is negative two. Five times t is just five t, and that equals zero. I'm trying to make my t's not look like pluses. So my t's always have curly bottoms, and my pluses don't. Um, so then I can say, all right, five t, I want to get that by itself, so let's chuck this negative two over to the right. So I do that by saying, 
uh, I add 2 to both sides. So that means this becomes a plus 2 that disappears, and a 0 plus 2 is just 2. And if I want to get t by itself, that means i got to get rid of the 5 that's multiplying. I divide then by 5, so 2 over 5. This is my answer. This is the exact value for the answer. So making t equals 2 over 5 makes these two weirdo things perpendicular. That's it. That's how you do these.